Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry for. Thank you for solving. Yeah. Well, what uh, I will share here today is about uh, the Archivista storing policy and using TUF to build trust. Maybe nobody is familiar with many of those words here, but I will try to give a legal introduction before we start. So my name is Cairo. I work uh, at TestifySec. I'm an open source engineer. I'm an author of the repository SAS for TUF. It's one um, service that provides the TUF uh, repository. I'm also maintaining uh, the Intoto Archivista and I'm active in the TUF community. And I will advise for everyone if there is more advanced TUF questions, there are many people there that can answer that. But let's, uh, okay, first uh, I just prepared this quick introduction here. Uh, the Intoto is an attestation framework uh, and uh, We'll talk about witness here. Witness is uh, using uh, the Intoto uh, framework. To, and this is on a CLI uh, that um, allows you to uh, generate attestations and also verify this, uh, policy, uh, these attestations against uh, policies. So I will, talk, I will demo, what I will demo here, we'll use uh, witness to generate an attestation and validate the policy. Um, Archivista, it's a graph and the storage service for Intoto attestations. It means that if you generate attestations, you can store all the attestations. In Archivista, you have GraphQL to make queries, so you can retrieve the attestations that you want to verify. <coughs> Excuse me. No. And um, TUF is a framework to secure the distribution of artifacts. And doesn't matter which uh, it's your artifact actually. Uh, of course, we use this a lot for software, but uh, any kind of document, uh, uh, images, what you need, uh, you can use. And uh, in that demo, I will be using also uh, our stuff um, because it's, I don't need to build in Archivista all the tough repositories, so I can just integrate it with uh, uh, our stuff. Um, okay. What I will demo here will be basically this confusing uh, diagram. Of course, we go for part. In, I will divide it in parts to make uh, more understandable. Yeah, what we show here is the process um, of witness generating an attestation and storing this attestation in Archivista. And this attestation will be uh, available for queries for witness when they want to verify what is in below here. Uh, of course, uh, we sh I will show also the, um, the policy uh, generation uh, and storing this policy in the Archivista. So what I need to uh, also highlight here is that currently, uh, Witness and Archivista can store an attestation, but cannot store a policy. So what I will demo here is actually a work in progress. Uh, it's a, a POC of uh, Archivista storing policy. Also, currently, Archivista doesn't support TUF. So in that demo, it's also a work in progress that we will share. So securing the policy. And the reason why we want to secure the policy is we don't want an attacker that gives you a policy that, al that will validate your uh, attestation and say, oh, everything is okay. So <clears throat> we'll go through this demo now, but let's, as I said, let's uh, divide it in, in parts and you can understand what is the work in progress here. First thing is like Archivista now has a database, the, the SQL that allows the, the GraphQL queries and also store the attestations in the, in the S3 buckets. So it's compatible with, uh, for example, you can use AWS S3 and store your attestations there. What is new here is the layer that we add in R stuff. So R stuff also uses the same, uh, most of these components, the database and S3. And uh, we will be signing, every time that you add a policy, uh, we will sign it in the, and uh, uh, make it uh, uh, secure. 
So, <clears throat> as I said, I would demo here the KMS uh, layer, the S3 bucket, and also the TUF. And I would say that also the Archivista administration layer that is creating the TUF metadata and signing it with the keys. So, yeah, but I know that's very confusing talking about signing root metadata and TUF. I don't know if how many people here are familiar with that. But basically, uh, I, I want to describe one example that can understand more what I'm talking about. Imagine that you have the root metadata that is signed by uh, HMS or uh, YubiKeys, um, and then, or, or you can use future six store as, well, as well to sign it, but you have also the, the target keys that sign the metadata where you store the policy, and in that case, we are using uh, KMS. But why we have this um, definition of multiple keys for root and also the, the, the KMS uh, key. Uh, because you have the delegations in tough metadata that uh, you have multiple uh, tough metadata and roles, and you have a root that delegate um, to targets where we store the policy in our scenario here. So then let's get an example why this is important. Imagine that you have a situation that you have an environment, then you have one KMS key, but for some reason, uh, the, the key access was weak and the key ID one was uh, leaked. So that key was signing all your policies when you're storing the metadata. So TUF allows you to do recovery this situation, I mean, rotating this key. So you create an, a new version of the root metadata and all the uh, administrators will sign it. And uh, when the, in that case, we have one rule here that we require two signatures in that case, in that uh, new root metadata. And when the second uh, uh, key is added, so it, this the second uh, version, it's valid and the, all the clients in, in our scenario here, all the witness client will use this uh, second version to validate the, the, the target metadata that contains uh, the, um, the policies. So then the question that most of uh, I receive is like, oh, do we need to re redistribute the new version of the root metadata, the version two? Actually, this is the magic of uh, TUF. You don't need to go to distribute because the first version is, uh, 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 can validate uh, other signatures of the second version. So let's go for uh, the demo then. Well, um, the first thing that uh, uh, I want to share is the deployment. Of course, this is a, my computer. And uh, yeah, this is a development environment, I, but I want to just make like reference for a real deployment. So we have the SQL database, PostgreSQL. We have a Redis that is used as a message queue for uh, our stuff. And here is one important component. It's that local stack I'm used to simulate the AWS services. So with the local stack, I'm using the KMS servers and also the S3 buckets. So yeah. And we have Archivista that uh, uses uh, all these components and also the API. So you see running here, it's uh, my deployment. I want to highlight uh, some parts of this. It's first, um, yeah, this is my KMS key. So local stack can simulate it very well. Uh, and I have also my S3, uh, yeah, my S3 buckets should be someplace here. Yeah, I have uh, the bucket for the tough metadata and also the Archivista. So what I will share now, it's uh, a process that I mentioned before, signing the root metadata. So basically what I'm doing here, it's create the ceremony where uh, everybody will uh, give the keys and we can uh, um, sign it. I need to do this uh, because it's, uh, everything here is running dynamically, so I will be quick. I will not uh, uh, go in details that are not relevant for this demo here, but um, yeah. So here's the, where I want to share the, I want to add the KMS key. In that case, I'm using the ACDSA. The size is okay? It's okay, the size? Oh. All right, so I will use the alias that I'm, um, I added the, uh, when I, I created the, the keys, so I don't need to deal with the IDs. Oh. 
So it will retrieve my KMS key, and I'm loading the um, root keys. As you remember, I, I, I said that, okay, this will be the keys used by uh, the admins of Archivista, let's say. Um, the first one is Janice Joplin. Um, and the second one. So this interface that you are looking here is the R stuff CLI for creating the ceremony and creating the first trusted root. So and the second designer here is Jimi Hendrix. Let's say that he is using his HSM or his guitar. I don't know. Well, um, well. This is a validation that I don't go through because it's not relevant here for our demo. And the next step that I'm gonna do, I will um, bootstrap it. I will say, okay, uh, our stuff, here's my trusted route, create all the delegated roles where you want to store the policies and make it safe. So, okay, and it fails. Okay. It's everything work in progress, so bugs everywhere. Right. So now I'm creating the the TUF, the uh, secure uh, TUF that will be used by um, uh, Archivista. So now let's go for more for the topic that I said. Let's say. Witness, Archivista, now what we will play around. First, um, let me get the uh, Witness. Okay. Yeah, first thing, um, I will generate uh, an attestation. Um, okay. What am I doing here in that command? So I'm running a uh, witness to, to generate an attestation that the step will be released. I'm using as a signer for this attestation uh, on a KMS key. And the output of this will be the attestation that is a DSC envelope signed. And this is the command that I'm, I'm running to, let's say, release this artifact, okay? Imagine that this also could be uh, as in your CI CD, that you are, when you build your uh, Docker image or your container image uh, or you build your, your application, is the moment that you are tracking everything, all the steps that are doing, the, in, in all the uh, parts of this step. So I generate an attestation. I will share what is an attestation, but what you see here is a DC envelope. But if I go through, if I can just open this um, attestation, you will see that it's like logging or adding all the steps, all the uh, hashes, all the output of the command, environment variables, everything it's collecting and this part of the attestation. And this is an, a, a compatible uh, in total attestation. So, <clears throat> What I, I have also in, um, with witness is the, the ability to generate uh, policies and validate it, right? So here's the policy that I wrote for um, uh, these attestations. So this policy uh, contains some uh, rego policies that basically the rego policy can add verifications like, for example, my build command was exactly this command to build this application or not. Um, was the exit code of my uh, command that build was uh, zero. So this policy can be uh, stored in, in Archivista in the future. It's a work in progress. And every time that you, you generate an attestation and your uh, clients want to uh, fetch, uh, download your artifact, they can validate if your uh, uh, attestations pass 
to your policy. So you check out the, the security of that. And what we are doing here, the layer, it's storing this policy also in the tough metadata to avoid any kind of uh, attack in the middle. So what I'm going to do now, I will sign this policy. Um, what I'm doing now in saying that I want to sign uh, the policy that I, I wrote um, and I will generate the new signed uh, DC envelope format uh, and I'm using the key MS key to sign it. So. Then I generated the signed policy. Okay. What uh, is next? Next, I want to store all these two components. Let's say that my CI CD, every time that generates an attestation, automatically push uh, it to uh, my Archivista. And uh, every time that my team defines a policy to be used uh, on the validation, I will also store it in, the, in my Archivista. So I will go back to the Archivista. and I will store all those components. So the first thing that I will store is the um, attestation. And the second one that I will store uh, will be my policy. Okay. What I, I, I can share here very quickly, it's like you say, I, this is really low level, but uh, yeah, it's going through uh, my archivist and also going through my tough metadata and is signed by tough metadata. So what I want to do now is the next step that it's uh, validate uh, this this policy against sorry these attestations against my policy. So uh, that would be um, this is the step that I just sh shared. I'm uploading uh, policy to to my archivista that can be retrieved by a witness when validating. So let's go to the uh, validation. Sorry, I'm switching a lot of screens, but it's really last minute demo that I prepared. So, okay. Um, let's do the verify. I will first do the verify that we don't uh, use uh, um, archivista uh, to retrieve any policy. That's how you can do it now. So basically, you pass your policy, you pass your uh, attestation, and the key, the public key that can validate these signatures and the artifact. So basically, based uh, in the, the artifact uh, um, uh, DGS, the, the SHA of the artifact, it can start all the validations and verify. So if I do this, the attestation passed because there is nothing uh, wrong. Uh, everything matched to the policy that uh, I wrote. So, and the second way that uh, I, I can do this now, it's the, the demo, the, the prototype. Um, you see that I, I'm removing a lot of information and just to give, giving the root.json, that's the trusted root that I signed, and the artifact. What happens here it will be, um, sorry, this flow, basically based on the artifact digest, it retrieves all the attestations that uh, contains this digest. And from the attestation, it queries the graph query of the archivista, all the policies that contain the subjects um, for, the, for the attestations. So then it looks all the policies that contain the same subject and retrieves this. Okay, let's go for this. And this will not work in purpose. Yeah, it not will work because right before this this presentation here, I I run the demo to check if everything was okay, and I changed the root metadata. You saw that I just generate a new root metadata. It shows that nobody can go to the witness and give a, 
an invalid root metadata and it will not pass. So I will retrieve the, the trusted root metadata. And what you can see now, it passed because the, the trusted root allows the witness to retrieve the policy that I stored because this policy is signed with the, uh, the keys that I, I should uh, have. So back to this, what happens here basically when you saw the error was that uh, invalid root metadata was given to the witness. And now in the witness uh, that, that I'm demo here, we have a tough client based on GoTuff that uh, checks the tough metadata and verifies that uh, there is a new version or not, but validates if the, the, the current version is valid when it goes to the download the targets as well. So uh, every time that I said that we can rotate the keys that are in the root metadata, always the previous versions can validate the next version. So from the one version, you could go for version nine without problem. And I'm using the uh, root metadata to store more uh, um, interesting uh, information uh, here. I go to this now. Yeah, so I'm you, you saw that I reduce a lot the number of um, information that I give in that comment, if you compare with the previous comment. It's because I'm using the root metadata as a sign of the uh, information to store uh, important information, like what's my Archivista URL? So it means that you are even the providing the, the where is my Archivista in a safe way because you are adding it in the tough metadata. It's a kind of SSL verification that we are doing. And to rotate this information, let's say your organization changed your Archivista URL, you just need to give it in the new version of the root metadata and it will be able to retrieve all the information. I'm using also the, the the R stuff uh, or tough metadata also stored in that uh, part. So it's easy to and it's safe to, to rotate information that is crucial for your clients to validate it. So next to what we want to do is create a policy approval. It means that every time that your team create a new policy, the other uh, people uh, that are, um, let's say, um, validating this policy or reviewing this policy, they need to sign the tough metadata as well, We're using their Ruby keys or, uh, or any kind of uh, HSM or, or uh, SIG store. So they will sign it and we say, okay, this policy is valid. If nobody signs the, this policy, it, this policy will stay there, but it's not valid, the witness will not uh, use them. So it allows, as I said, you can rotate it and you can create a set of people that are uh, authors and uh, approvers of, the, of this policy. And how we store in the tough metadata, I know that's a little bit uh, confusing, but yeah, we have the policy stored in the tough metadata uh, that is signed. You see the si sign part here but we keep also the old versions of this policy. So if you need for a certain version of an artifact to validate against old policy, you'll be able to do this as well. Uh, and what is next? We need to improve this mapping policy to attestations. Um, uh, and I'm cleaning up, clean up uh, this code to make it uh, in upstream so people can just start uh, trying it and give uh, us early feedback for that. Yeah, that's it for the demo. Questions? <laughs> Questions or any point that we want to discuss is welcome.
Yeah, and mostly for a software that doesn't matter which type of artifact this software is. Uh, once you can generate attestations, you can use Go and use this process. If you can generate an attestation for the secrets generation, yes. <laughs> yeah. If you can, yeah, maybe you need to write your uh, custom uh, attestator for, for this, yeah. By the way, we have uh, in the second floor uh, the booth of uh, Intoto and Tuff. So if you want to go there to understand more about those components separated or yeah, because this is a work in progress, nothing is released yet. Just want to share with folks here, yeah. Okay, thank you.